What is up guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be giving you a full review of Dave Ramsey's financial coach master training as well as his ongoing membership, the Ramsey Preferred Coach Program. Toward the end of the video, I'll also reveal why I ultimately chose to leave the RPC program and why I don't recommend it for individuals who are wanting to use this program to build a full-time online financial coaching practice, but I will reveal what I recommend instead. This video is probably gonna be somewhat polarizing and you may not agree with some of what I say or you flat out just may not like some of what I say and that's okay. And I really want to take this moment to encourage you to watch until the very end of the video. I don't want anything that I say to be taken out of context. I know this video is long because I have a lot to say and I want to make sure that people are educated before they make a decision about purchasing this program and I want to help them see if it's right for them. So it's worth repeating, do not make a decision about this program until you've watched through to the end of this video. I wanted to do a review of this program because it was one of my first big investments in my business in 2018 and I get a lot of questions about my experience and ultimately why I wanted to separate myself from the Ramsey Solutions brand. But first, I want to explain what the program covers, what the objective is, and how exactly it's laid out. Financial Coach Master Training or FCMT is under the larger umbrella of Ramsey Solutions. I say larger umbrella because Ramsey Solutions has grown to much more than just a radio show over over the past decade. And the branches of this organization are huge. They cover Ramsey personalities such as Chris Hogan, Anthony O'Neill, Rachel Cruz, Christy Wright, Ken Coleman, and more. And they also cover curriculum for K through 12, as well as college curriculum when it comes to personal finance and Financial Peace University. Another big aspect of Ramsey Solutions are their live events such as FPU Live, the Smart Conference, the Entre Leadership Summit. I could go on and on. The point that I'm making is that this company company is huge and has really exploded over the past decade and has helped millions of people work toward becoming debt free, which is absolutely amazing. And I say all this to clarify, you don't get taught by Dave Ramsey live. I've had a lot of people ask me, so how was it getting taught by Dave Ramsey himself live? Or like, how, how is it being in the inner circle of Dave Ramsey? And my answer is just always no, that's not how this works. There's a handful of recorded videos of Dave in the training, but most of them are not Dave and absolutely none of them are live. He's the CEO of a multi-million dollar, possibly billion dollar company. He's not teaching FCMT. So now that I've cleared that up, here's what the program is. It is 14 lessons that fall into four categories. Number one is establishing your foundation. Number two is navigating a financial crisis. Number three is planning for your financial future. And number four is launching your practice. In addition to the 14 lessons, you also get four interactive coaching calls. These are essentially four group coaching calls spread out throughout the program. And and it's a good place for them to give you some feedback, ask how you're doing, kind of check in on you. And they also are able to give you some very practical feedback when it comes to role-playing coaching calls. The website also states that once you've successfully completed the FCMT online lessons and attended the live training sessions, you will earn the designation of Ramsey Solutions Master Financial Coach. This is a designation you can use when promoting your coaching services. So legally, it's not a certification because financial coaching is largely unregulated and there are no certifications certifications, but they give you this designation in place of a certification to kind of show that you're qualified. One other thing that I want to point out on their website is that they specifically say, join the select group of Ramsey Solutions Master Financial Coaches who are using their training to make an impact in their communities through ministry or business. Other than that, it's a pretty straightforward self-paced course with an upsell at the end to become a Ramsey Preferred Coach or an RPC. So let me explain what an RPC is before we get into the pros and cons of the course because a lot of people when they finish the course they do go ahead and become an RPC. Becoming an RPC is the membership upsell that they have at the end of FCMT. When I became an RPC in October 2018 the monthly fee was $79. When I left the program in May of 2020 the monthly fee had jumped to $150 a month. So this is what's included within the RPC program and first of all is the Facebook group. At the time that I'm filming this there's a little over 
700 people within the RPC community. The Facebook group is a resource where you can ask questions and get things answered and kind of brainstorm with your fellow RPCs. The second big thing that you get are monthly development calls. These could be on anything from mindset when coaching to utilizing the story brand to help build your business to interviewing coaches that are within the RPC community. The third big thing you get are two zip code listings. So what this means is that every single RPC gets a listing on the Dave Ramsey website. You can choose two different zip codes to be listed under and then when someone puts in their information, they're connected with the three closest coaches to them. So again, as of May 2020, each RPC automatically got two zip codes, but you could pay for more zip codes and I think that was unlimited. And I know people are going to ask me how many leads did you get each month from the Ramsey website and of course the answer is it depends. When I left the program in May of 2020, I was getting maybe like two a month during the height when I was in the program. I was in the program for about two years. So during the height of that, I maybe got like closer to 10. But what's even more important than the quantity of leads that you get is the quality of leads that you get. What I found to be pretty typical is that the leads that I received were not very qualified for my coaching. There's not a lot of information when they go to put their contact information into the form and so I would get people that didn't know that they were essentially putting their information in for a paid coaching program. They thought that it was free. Um, I also got people that were looking for Dave Ramsey himself and were very confused when they got on a call with me. So unfortunately, I don't think that it's well communicated and what the form is when they hit submit. Another aspect of the RPC program is the Ask a Coach feature. So what this is, is literally within the Financial Peace University kits, people would receive a link where they could go in and ask a coach a question and those coaches are required to get back to them within 24 hours. So now that I've summarized the program itself, I'd like to go back and kind of highlight the things and the features that I found exceptionally helpful. And the first thing is this. Within the training, Chris Hogan and Dave Ramsey have recorded some of the content, and I found that their stuff was the best. They're very engaging teachers. Overall, they're just great communicators. The stories that they told were very memorable, and I really enjoyed this part of the content. Content. You won't be bored when you're watching these two talk about personal finance. The second thing is that the content was very well laid out and organized. And I'll show you a short clip here of what the FCMT dashboard looks like and how the content is laid out. All right, so I wanted to show you guys the dashboard and what it actually looks like inside FCMT. You can see you've got your coaching calls, um, most popular resources. These are the lessons. So these were the 14 lessons I had talked about. There are different, I guess you'd call them kind of like modules inside. And then you've got post lesson assessments after each lesson. And these are everything from the coaching session itself. Um, this is where they talk about disc personalities, um, collections, bankruptcy, foreclosures and mortgages, college planning, student loans, estate planning, choosing the right kinds of insurance, coaching for retirement, prospects, boundaries, and creating value. And then 13 and 14, more so about your coaching practice. They actually just added these not too terribly long ago, um, but building a story brand and the power of intentionality. And then they've got the FCMT certificate down here at the bottom. And then we've got resources over here as well. So you can see here all the PDFs you can use with your client and then PDFs that you can use yourself as kind of like professional development. The one-on-one -on -one coaching calls get scheduled here. I've already done all of mine, so there may not be much there. And then the launch plan is more so for like launching your business as an online financial coach. So that kind of wraps up the dashboard. Just wanted to show you guys, like I said, I thought it was a huge pro that the online content was very easy to navigate. It was very organized and I liked how they really laid it out very simply. You know, obviously you're not going to do even a whole lesson necessarily in one sitting. And so it's good to be able to go back and know exactly where you left off. The third pro are the four group coaching calls spread out throughout the program so that you can get some practical feedback about how you are progressing. Unfortunately, I think I liked the idea of this more than how it actually played out. When I went through the program, they were literally phone calls. It was not over Zoom. So it was a little awkward on like when to jump in and when to talk and when to listen because you can't see any 
any visual feedback. You can't see any facial expressions. And so it was kind of hard to communicate that way. And another aspect that made it a little bit awkward was that there was usually about four or five of us on the call with the actual coach. And it was difficult to not compare yourself to these other coaches and how they are progressing. And just with how the calls themselves were conducted, it started this vibe or environment of competitiveness between coaches. I have one more for you, and that was the progress rewards in the FCMT dashboard. At certain intervals throughout the program, you would receive prizes like Financial Peace University, Every Dollar Plus, the book Retire Inspired by Chris Hogan. And I thought that these were just like really nice personal touches. Not a lot of other other programs do this and actually the only other one that I've ever been in that does this is Kajabi and this is where I host my website and my courses. So now before I get into the cons and whether or not I would recommend the program I want to specifically talk about my experience with FCMT and RPC. So I bought the FCMT course in September of 2018 and it's disappointing to say but I was not blown away by the content itself. I had grown up in a family that really strived to be debt free. I had already taken FPU twice, once in high school and once after I got married, and the content just really wasn't that much more than FPU. Dave gives away so much information for free on his YouTube channel and on his socials, and the content was just a lot of summarizing that information, and if you follow him at all, you've seen a lot of it and you know where he stands on these issues. So I personally was very disappointed in this. I wanted less Dave content. I had already consumed a lot of Dave content. I knew where he stood on pretty much everything. And I was wanting more marketing content, more how to build a financial coaching practice that is thriving. I mean, after all, Ramsey Solutions is one of the, if not the biggest company when it comes to personal finance. And I wanted to learn from the best. I wanted to learn how did Ramsey Solutions build this incredible empire? What can I learn from how they do business? And they have such a huge opportunity here, a huge platform. And honestly, I was just devastated. It was none of this. It was none of what I was looking for. There was just not a lot of marketing expertise at all. They do go through the philosophy behind Donald Miller's book, Building a Story Brand, and I'm a huge fan of him and that book, but again, I had bought the book a few years prior, so it was not new information for me. I would even say I was especially excited about learning about all the ways that Ramsey Solutions has utilized social media to get their name out there, and yet there was no social media specific trainings, nothing on Instagram or YouTube, or even how to run Facebook groups, Facebook ads, nothing like that, not even like content management systems like Later or Hootsuite. And that was ultimately a big hole in my business. I had to get more coaching on that later, and I was adamant about putting it into my own Become a Coach program because stuff like that is vital for online businesses. I was also really looking forward to learning more about customer relationship management or CRM and there was nothing on it while I was there. As I was leaving in May, they were beginning to roll out their own CRM software to manage Ramsey leads and to be honest, it had a lot of bugs and a lot of issues just like any new software does. This was very odd to me and again, just kind of behind the times because there's a lot of really awesome CRM softwares out there already like Dubsado or HubSpot, Google Streak even. Uh, we didn't even talk about any sort of task management softwares like Trello or Asana. And another big disappointment that I had with the content piece of the program was the downloadable resources available to us as coaches. They were all PDFs. How can I use this and send it to a client or have them fill something out and us work together on it and then keep it after we're done when it's all PDFs? And I know before you say there's workarounds, there's ways that you can make them fillable PDFs and all that stuff, they had specifically told us they didn't want us altering the resources that they gave us at all to use them. And I could see that if there was some proprietary information or something along those lines, but it was very basic information that you could find on the internet for free. And when I sign up for a coaching program, I want those resources to be used. I want to be able to use those resources with clients. I want to be able to fill them in and make them my own. Uh, that's kind of the whole point. By the time I, you know, create this, 
I'm reinventing the wheel and I think there's just better, more efficient ways to pass on resources to coaches that are wanting to use stuff with their clients. Just very disappointing. Like when you spend thousands of dollars on a coaching program, you kind of want it to be a one-stop shop. You don't want to have to then create your own resources and hire other coaches and go through all these other trainings outside the program to learn about the stuff that I wanted to learn about and now the stuff that I teach in my own program. Within the content, they do go over the DISC profile. I'm very familiar with DISC and I didn't use it with my clients slash I don't use it with them now just because I think DISC is pretty limiting when you're only looking at four personality types when it comes to money. Um, I think that there's more in-depth personality tests like Myers-Briggs and the Enneagram um, that are a little bit more relevant as well. I personally am going to start using the Enneagram with my clients because I think that a lot of people are very familiar with it. It's very relevant and there's a lot of content out there that people can do research and really do a lot of introspective work with it. So when I became an RPC in 2018, I learned that a lot of the coaches within the Facebook community and in the group in general were just starting to meet with clients online through Zoom. And this shocked me. I had started a completely 100% online business in 2017. So the fact that a lot of these coaches were still meeting in person felt very behind the times for me. All of the trainings and the lessons that we went through talked about meeting with clients in person and a big point of contention was where to meet the clients and again this was like very irrelevant for me because I was just meeting clients online through zoom and I remember a lot of coaches in the Facebook group saying they didn't want to meet online they wanted to meet in person despite the efficiency privacy and profitability of coaching through zoom and when I left in May 2020 of course there was more and more coaches utilizing zoom for their coaching practice but at this point I've been running and online business for three years. This should be a staple. I mentioned I started my business in 2017 and I go so in depth in this video right here about that program and that is Bookkeeper Launch. It was my very first step on my entrepreneurial journey and if you're looking for another program that can teach you how to run an online business, I highly, highly recommend checking out this video here. Anyway, I wonder if I would have taken FCMT first if my perspective of the program would have been different. Bookkeeper Launch just set the bar so incredibly high. It's impossible to know, of course, but just as an example, I did my ROI on Bookkeeper Launch and I invested upfront $1,300 and was able to pay back that investment my first three months in business. In my first six months total, I did $14,000 doing bookkeeping for small businesses. I didn't invest in any other coaching programs and I didn't have any other large professional development purchases that I made, it was just that $1,300 up front. With FCMT, I don't really have the ROI to give you because I had to invest in more courses and more training and more mentorship and coaching afterwards because FCMT just wasn't cutting edge. Being candid, I spent thousands of dollars after taking FCMT to get my business to where it wants to be. And who wants to spend $2,000 now on FCMT and then thousands of dollars later to build a full-time business? You have to unlearn and then relearn and you're piecing together information. And honestly, it's just like, a huge headache. And ultimately, this is a big reason why I created my own program for teachers at heart who want to become a financial coach. I saw a huge need here for a cutting edge, innovative financial coaching program. And so I started working with coaches toward the end of 2019. At this point, at the end of 2019, I had successfully established my own financial coaching practice and I was making triple what I made full time teaching. And I was doing all this from home. I'll talk more about my Become a Coach program toward the end of the video, so keep watching. And there's also a link below in the description for more information. So at this point, I think you understand my frustration with the program itself. And here's the thing, it wasn't necessarily a bad program for people who just wanted some skills, some people skills and some financial skills, and wanted to use this to volunteer, to give back at their school or their church, or just use this to help people for free. So so then I started thinking, maybe this is more of just a marketing issue. Maybe 
I misunderstood. And this is more marketing for people who want to just do this for free, who want to coach people for free, just volunteer and give back in that way. But there is a ginormous caveat with this perspective and really a huge caveat with just coaching for free in general. And that caveat is this, coaches that charge and especially coaches that charge a lot of money are going to be wildly more successful and have bigger, more powerful transformations occur in their clients than coaches who coach for free. A great visual of this and kind of like a, a parallel really is think about club fitness or really any very low ticket gym membership. I don't have anything against club fitness. I just think we can all uh, relate to that. From personal experience, honestly, I can't tell you how many clients have come to me that I've worked with that pay a gym, a cheap gym membership every month and don't go to the gym. Why? Because it's cheap. That membership, that fee coming out every month, it doesn't hurt especially if my client hates confrontation, it is so much easier for them to just pay the five or $10 every month than it is to call the gym and quit. On the other hand, let's talk about really high ticket gym memberships. For example, CrossFit. CrossFit is stupid expensive. These gym memberships can range anywhere from a hundred to $200 a month, which is really expensive. But when people pay, they pay attention. It's undeniable that CrossFit is known for having ridiculously fit members, crazy transformations, and dedicated coaches that help foster these transformations. So let me paint a picture for you. So if this is you, if you are volunteering because you would feel bad for charging people who are trying to get out of debt, if this is you, if you are just wanting to help people and you, you don't want anything in return, or if you feel guilty or shameful, or you don't think people would pay you for your services, this, let me tell you, this is not, this is 100% not sustainable and you're doing your clients a huge disservice. And this honestly might be just like blowing your mind right now because it's very counterintuitive, right? Wouldn't the club fitnesses of the world have the upper hand because it's so cheap? Why would anyone pay $200 a month to go to CrossFit when they have the same access, the same equipment, all this stuff is the same at club fitness? Because money is motivating. Money is skin in the game. And in the coaching world, you get what you pay for and the biggest transformations never come from the lowest bidder. Yeah, calm down. Obviously, I get a little bit worked up about this, um, but I wanted to touch on it because the philosophy within the RPC group was very much this way at times. You might be surprised that actually industry standard for one-to-one -one coaching is anywhere between $250 to $500 a month. And this stat is taken not only from financial coaches, but also life and fitness coaches as well. So in full transparency, when I was in RPC, I ran a six-month program and I charged $400 dollars a month for that program. I've changed mine quite a bit now, but when I was in the program, people would put kind of like polls within the Facebook group asking people what they charged. And to be honest, I never felt comfortable answering those polls with my answer because it was always the most expensive. The next highest would be usually in the 300 range, but I would say that the majority of the coaches were charging between 150 to $200 per session or per month. I just didn't feel comfortable sharing what I charged within the group because I had seen arguments and and things break out in the group because of pricing before and kind of the vibe overall I mean no one would come out and just blatantly say you're being selfish for charging this much but the vibe overall was kind of like you know do you need to charge that much why are you charging that much um, and I just I didn't want to have to answer to a group like that but as I mentioned earlier I had taken other coaching courses and I had had other mentors besides FCMT and they really helped me see the low ticket versus the high ticket truths some of which I've shared on this video ultimately I had to decide for myself if I'm doing one-to-one -one coaching I'm going to be charging a high ticket price so that I'm invested so that my client is 
is invested in so that we get the biggest transformation possible. My background is in education. I had worked really hard and stretched myself really thin for $10 an hour and it is a lose-lose situation. I decided that there were better alternatives to that. I didn't have to do that anymore. Um, it's not efficient and it's not productive. So that was hard for me. I felt kind of on the outside of the group sometimes. Um, there were there were coaches within the group that had several hundred clients every month and they were charging a bare minimum or a sliding scale or whatever and that just wasn't the way that I wanted to do business and that wasn't the way that I knew I could get the biggest transformations for my clients. I, again, was focusing more on quality, I think, than necessarily on quantity. Today, that's also what I teach my coaches. I want my coaches to be motivated to work with people. I want their clients to be motivated and willing to change. And I want it to be a win for literally everyone involved. I'll probably just do a completely separate video on pricing for financial coaching because that is the number one question I get as a coach from other coaches um, and I think it'd be good just to to save financial coaching practices I think that's probably also the number one reason the financial coaches get burnt out and ultimately quit when coaches charge $150 a month or $150 a session they get subpar clients. They get clients that complain. They get clients that don't listen and don't follow through or don't show up. I can't tell you how many times in the Facebook group people would complain about their clients not showing up. And every single time, my question to them was, what are you charging? It's probably not enough if they're paying you and then literally not showing up. I really hope you're starting to see that this is not sustainable and that there is a much better way. I really, really wanna talk more about this. Um, I have a lot to say about it, but I wanna get back to the program, but do be looking out. I will do another video specifically on pricing for financial coaches. Well, originally where I was going with this is that I was saying this program wouldn't be bad if it was for people who were going to volunteer their time or work with people at their church or school. And again, in theory, that sounds great, but as I've shown you, when financial coaches work for free and they don't charge, it's just not effective for anybody. So at this point, I've been a Ramsey Preferred Coach for about a year and I start to run into another issue that I am very displeased with. I posted on all my socials a graphic about my personal investment strategy. I started investing when I was relatively young and so low expense ratios with time is really gonna work for me in the long run. Within the post, I shared what a target date index fund was. I shared some differences between index funds and mutual funds and ultimately I had been getting a lot of questions about using an advisor. A lot of people thought you had to use an advisor and so I wanted to educate and clear it up that you can invest on your own. You don't have to go through an advisor. Let me pause the story really quick and just say that I really do enjoy working with most smart investors or ELPs, endorsed local providers. These advisors and these professionals, similarly to RPCs, pay a monthly fee in order to be listed on Dave Ramsey's website. And if you're familiar with Dave Ramsey's investing philosophy, he really only promotes paid for real estate and mutual funds. This is interesting because it is well known that mutual funds typically have a much higher expense ratio than index funds. And Calling it a conflict of interest might be strong language, but just really think about this. Dave Ramsey promotes mutual funds, and these people pay him a monthly fee in order to be listed on his website so that Dave can then drive traffic to these endorsed local providers or smartvesters. I wanna reiterate again that I have a lot of great relationships with smartvesters. I've worked with a lot of smartvesters that I refer clients to and that they've given me clients as well. On this particular day, I did have a smart investor reach out to me and he was very unhappy with the graphic and the information that I had shared. He was concerned that using a target date index fund and not using an advisor conflicted with what Dave taught and he was just very displeased that I had shared that at all. I just replied that I had recently had a huge influx of questions and especially wrong assumptions when it came to investing and that my goal as a coach on social media is to 
educate people about all of their options. We just kind of had to agree to disagree at that point, but I felt a little weird. I felt like someone was kind of peeking over my shoulder and making sure that everything that I said and everything that I posted about was perfectly aligned with what Dave Ramsey said. The light bulb really went off for me when on a completely separate occasion, I got an email from Jeremy, who was the head of RPC, saying that I needed to schedule a call with him because he had received a complaint about me as an RPC. On the call, he explained that he had received a complaint that someone had gone through the Ramsey website, she'd put in her information, her zip code aligned with mine, and when she went to my website, she booked a call, we met, and she said that I didn't align with the baby steps. Literally my jaw dropped. I replied that she never booked a call. I had reached out. I had never heard from her. She was just basically lying and kind of snitching on me um, when I hadn't done, I had not even talked to her at all, uh, which really blew me away. I was pretty blindsided by this. Shocked, I asked for specifics. I asked, you know, what exactly did she say I didn't align with? Um, did she have any other details? And he said, no, that's kind of what he was asking me. Um, so then I, again, I explained I had never talked to her. We never spoke on the phone. I don't know where this animosity came from. Um, and to Jeremy's credit, he was very chill. He was very relaxed. He was not really accusatory whatsoever, but it was more so just the point that I felt so scrutinized. I felt um, like my work was under some sort of microscope and that if I said or did anything out of Dave Ramsey alignment that people could just go and snitch to my boss and legitimately get me in trouble. And this didn't sit well with me at all. Again, Jeremy was very respectful, but it was just the point that I didn't start a business to have someone tell me what I could or couldn't say or what I could or couldn't tell clients or what I could and couldn't do on social media. And so that was one of the biggest deciding factors of me choosing to leave RPC. As a result, I really wanna caution anyone who is thinking about going through FCMT and becoming an RPC, if you don't align with Dave about everything that he says on every issue, you won't be able to speak openly or really speak at all about those things. And I actually had a very clear example of this. Just a few weeks ago, a woman DM'd me and asked, you know, I'm in FCMT, I'm thinking about becoming a Ramsey preferred coach. She explained her perspective on credit cards. Let's just say it wasn't the Ramsey way. And she asked, is this gonna be an issue for me in RPC? And very candidly, I just answered, yeah, I think that's gonna be a huge issue. And she didn't respond. Um, she probably didn't like my answer, but um, she had asked and that was the truth. Like if you, you know, one of the things I really have wanted to speak about was credit scores and I haven't been able to do that until very recently. Um, so yeah, if your view on credit scores or credit cards or investing or something else is different and doesn't align you just flat out won't be able to speak about those things. And as I grew into my own brand, this ultimately became a huge deal breaker for me. I really wanna make a note here too. I mean, do you wanna hire a coach that is just regurgitating the information that someone else said? Or do you want a coach that is thinking and speaking for themselves? They're processing, they're, they're making decisions based on what they truly believe and not just based on what someone else told them to say or do. As I mentioned before, the membership price of being an RPC jumped from $79 a month to, by the time I left, $150 a month. And honestly, it was just becoming harder and harder to find reasons to stay. I will say the one thing that kept me there the longest were the relationships that I had built with several of the other coaches within the RPC community. Truthfully, I didn't connect well with some of the other older coaches within the group. Their philosophy about money was a little bit more Dave or die, and I just find that closed-minded, but I did really make some strong friendships within the group with some other coaches that I still keep in contact with today through social media and other Facebook groups. And the reason I didn't put this as one of the pros about the program is because it's not the program itself, uh, but I really do value those individuals, and I'm glad that we can continue 
continue communicating and supporting each other's businesses, even outside the RPC Facebook group. All right, so overall, would I recommend this program to someone who approaches me and asks what I thought about it? Unfortunately, no. Although I am glad I went through it just so that I knew what a need this was in the online space. There really needed to be a cutting edge, innovative financial coaching program. And that is exactly why I created my own Become a Coach program. And I'm so happy to say that I love training up the next generation of financial coaches who desire to build a debt destroying empire like I have. Over the past three years, I've seen so many coaches get burnt out and quit or they pivot from financial coaching when it's just not working out and they'll move on to business coaching or life coaching or mindset or whatever it may be. And I'm here to tell you this, the issue isn't financial coaching and the issue isn't your clients. It is 100% possible to build a thriving business where you attract bomb clients that you absolutely love working with. Financial coaching shouldn't be solely a self sacrificing act. You shouldn't do financial coaching out of guilt or shame. And really, I think that a lot of the root of this is from a very twisted mindset when it comes to wealth and to money. Below, you can find a link for more information on my Become a Coach program. This is for you if you want to help people pay off tons of debt while working from home and making more than your day job. I teach you how to build an audience, how to sell out of integrity, and how to launch like a boss so that it's a no-brainer yes from your ideal clients. And the best part is that these are the exact same systems and procedures that I use in my own business that has generated over $150,000. You can also find my curriculum that's located on my website and it walks you through all the topics that we cover in the program like target market, offer definition, business finances, sales calls, lead magnet, funnels, branding, batching content, and analytics. There's not many programs out there for financial coaches and this is the only one that offers all of those things. This is a one-stop shop for teachers at heart who want to build a coaching empire. I don't play small and neither do my coaches. We have a very real opportunity here to not just change our family tree, but by becoming financial coaches, we can change our neighborhoods and our societies as well. I appreciate your open-mindedness watching this video and please know that it was not necessarily an easy video for me to do, but definitely an honest one and a necessary one. If you got value from this video, don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe below, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.